Hello and good morning. It's Jen. Welcome back to my craft table and channel. So I'm excited about today. Today is installment five of my Cricut Summer Series and we're talking about some yummy goodness. Today we're going to make a s'mores station um, or I guess really more of a s'mores caddy but a s'mores station, a s'mores caddy. I don't know about you but summer just talks you know of camping and bonfires and just family fun so i found this particular little bin um at well actually i found this at walmart yes i did i found this at walmart and i thought that this would make a great s'mores station so some place to put a couple packages of um graham crackers put some candy bars, and then over here to put some packaging uh, of the marshmallows. I don't need a bigger uh, piece of vinyl. I'm not going to be using the maker. I'm just going to use my Cricut Joy, but you could absolutely do this on any of the Cricut machines. So I have some, um, I have some HTV vinyl, and mainly I'm using HTV because I do not have adhesive vinyl, and that's okay. It's, we'll just go ahead and adhere that with the HTV vinyl in white. And you can see that basically it's going to be taking up most of this space. And I'm going to be cutting two of these since I have two sides to my box. I'm going to have the um, true control knife because I'm going to need that to slice away some negative space in the design once I adhere it. And then We've got weeding tool, tweezers, a measuring tape, a brayer, and of course our cutting mat. So before we get down to business, let me take you over to Design Space and just show you the design and how I'm putting it together. And then we'll get to putting the box together. In Design Space, I've already pulled up all of the elements that we need for the project. And I just wanted to walk you through them just a little bit. This particular design right here is one that I found in Design Space. I thought it was great. I really liked it. And the really nice thing about this graphic is that the stars are their own element. The words, all three of the words are their own elements. The campfire, all of the campfire, these elemental pieces here, you can select each one of them individually and move them around if you need to. And then we've got the, uh, I've got the hearts. The hearts are their own element as well. What I decided to do was to size the entire graphic, let's choose the whole thing. My box is a 12 by four and a quarter. So I chose to pull up a box. I just went to my shapes panel over here, just went to the shapes panel, pulled out a rectangle, and I sized it the size of my box, 12 by four and a quarter. And then I just placed the graphic over like this. Perfect. Now, if my box was solid, I would be done and we would cut. My box is not solid. So what I need to do is I need to kind of mimic the fact that my box actually is slats. So I pulled up three more rectangles and I sized them to the size of the slat. And each slat is 12 wide by one and one eighth. So 1.125. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just set them here. I'm going to move this one in the bottom and I'm going to select the, the large rectangle in the back and then I'm going to go to a line left and I want to do a line bottom. Okay. And those are ready to go. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the top one. Move this out of the way. So this top one here, and I'm going to select the large square again. These I want to align top and align left, just like that. All right. 
And then I have this one here in the middle. So at this point, I'm going to select all of the small slats together. And I just want to go to align left. And now the top and the bottom are already where I would like them to be. So I'm going to go back to align and I'm going to go to distribute vertically. And what this does is this just is mimicking my box. I'm going to go ahead and attach that. So this is what my box looks like. I do not need to um, cut any of this. So this actually I will hide before we cut. Then I brought my design here and I'm going to just bring that to the front. So arrange, bring to front. And then what I did is I kind of just stared at it for probably about a good two minutes. <laughs> but I wanted to make sure that I had things where I wanted them. So for instance, if I move this down a little bit, what I notice is that I need to go into my s'mores graphic. The hearts, you know, the hearts are actually not in a bad spot, but I can select on this one heart and kind of bring it down just a little. I think making is in a good position. S'more is definitely in a good position. And then as far as the stars are concerned, um, they were actually clustered all together and I moved the larger star so that it would be on the middle slat. And then I have these smaller stars and I'm just going to make sure that they're placed on these two slats independently. And then the word s'more is definitely in a good spot. And then memories. Memories is nicely sized. I have the star there. Okay, so we've taken care of hearts and stars and I just select each of these things independently like in the layers panel and I can move it around by itself. I can take the word memories or making or s'more or memories and just move them around the way I want. I could even resize them to be a little bit smaller. In fact, I might do that. Just make that just a hair smaller. There we go. That's a little better. And then I'll do the same thing with s'more, just ever so slightly smaller. So the memories is four and a half tall, no, four and a half wide and one tall approximately. S'more is one tall and approximately four wide. And then the word making. And the word making actually could be, well, I think making is probably pretty good. The font is different on all of these. So, you know, their sizing is a little different. So my words are fine. Then I'm going to come over here to the campfire. Now with the campfire snack, I noticed that my wood piece, I'm going to select just the wood piece. The wood piece, I'm going to resize it down just ever so slightly. Okay. And I think that's much better. As far as the campfire flames itself, um, I am going to make that pretty big. And what's going to happen with the campfire flames is once I put this down with my HTV, I'm actually going to use my true control knife and I'm going to slice off that piece. And then the same thing with my s'more stick. Okay, the campfire stick, and then you've got the little marshmallow. I think that looks great. So everything is ready to cut. I am going to take the boxes and I'm going to hide them because I don't need them. And I am going to just make sure this says s'mores graphic. It's, I renamed it. You can actually just rename things over here by double clicking. And it is uh, attached. So when you click on it, it says detach down here. And I'm going to actually weld those together. And the reason why is I don't want to have to deal with one tiny little thing like this. So I'm going to select the campfire stick and the marshmallow. And then I'm going to click on combine at the bottom and then weld. OK, 
Okay, and then you can see right here that it gets rid of that cut line. And so this top of my stick and marshmallow are now one cohesive piece. All right, let me, because I welded that, it moved it out of, out of place. So a really cool tip, so I'm kind of glad I did that, is now that this welded image is up here, I need to put it back with my campfire grouping. I'm going to just click on it, and I'm just going to drag it down into the campfire snack, and now it is right there. Okay, so instead of having four things under campfire snack, I have three things. Oh, one more thing to show you while we're in here. I want to show you what happens when you move things around. Okay, so that way I just changed it to black so you could see the difference. Let's say that I move the back square here and I notice that it comes to the front. Well, I could go to arrange and then send it to the back. But if I'm moving things around and I'm playing with them and resizing and all, let's just say that I put that there and I bring all of these out of the group. Okay, so I can do that. I can also ungroup them. What I've noticed when working with Design Space is that whatever order from top to bottom here, that is how they're, quote, layered on screen. So you can see right now I have this one square, or it says square, it's really a rectangle. I have this rectangle here laying on top. Now I can click on the large black rectangle, either in my layers panel or here, and then I could do a line and go to back, or I actually can just click on it and drag it to the bottom of these three rectangles that are gray and it will send it to the back automatically. So just a little, you know, depending on what you're doing and you know, you may not um, wanna go to arrange for some reason, but you can just move things around in your layers panel and that's really kind of convenient sometimes. I'm going to go ahead and group those together and I'm going to go ahead and hide them. Okay, and now back to the make screen. All right, everything is now as it should be. Go ahead and click mirror. All right, and then I can just go ahead and cut this two times. I can also click on this arrow here, change the project copies to two, and then apply, and then it'll show two mats with the same configuration. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at one, and then I'll hit continue. Okay, now that it is connected to my joy, I'm gonna go ahead and click on Everyday Iron-On. And it does give me a warning to make sure that the mirror is turned on and then we place the iron-on vinyl shiny side down. Okay, you can double check your settings over here. Default pressure, fine point blade is loaded. And now I'm going to go ahead and get my vinyl loaded onto my mat and cut out and I will see you in just a moment. Right, everything is cut out on our joy. And before we go to the overhead camera and start putting this together, I am going to go to my home screen in Design Space. And over here on the left hand side, I'm going to go down to the heat guide. I just am going to go to the heat guide to double check. I'm using the Cricut Easy Press Mini. I am going to be using Everyday Iron On. And then we're going to be putting that on wood and I'll click apply. And then this is gonna tell me that I need medium heat. So that's two wavy lines and we will be heating for 40 seconds using constant movement and firm pressure and it'll be a cool peel. Just FYI, it, it does tell you the supplies you need, the prep you need and the application, okay? And then how to care for your items. So I re really like the heat guide and I tend to check it pretty often just to be on the safe side. Head back to our overhead camera and start putting our project together. I'm gonna go ahead and with my Easy Press Mini, gonna click the line two times and let that start heating up. That probably won't take very long at all. I've got both sides of my vinyl cutout. I'm going to pull that off. 
and replace here there replace the protective sheet on my joy cutting mat and then let's see this particular side over here there's a tiny area that I want to cut out because um, I actually can use this square. I, I sometimes do like really tiny things, so I can definitely use this square. And then on this side where the campfire is, um, I'm going to cut off this excess over here. So the next thing that we're going to do is, yep, not sure where my brain is today. Okay, full disclosure, and I'm sure this has happened to more than myself. So this particular vinyl, there are actually two different vinyls, okay? This particular vinyl, when I go to weed it, I just pull the corner up, really easy, no big deal. Okay, this particular vinyl, um, as you could see, I was having a little bit of trouble getting it started. And this side of it is very shiny. And this is the duller side. But on a whim, I decided to turn the back over. And so ultimately what I did is I cut on this side. Of my vinyl. I don't think it went all the way through. I because this side is very smooth, I can't feel any cut lines. I'm gonna go ahead and recut this off camera. That way I can still have two sides to my box. Um, so if you ever are not sure about your vinyl, like which side is which, a couple of things you can do before you start your project, go into the corner and see if you can what side you can peel up. Okay, and then you can always put a piece of washi tape on this carrier sheet side so that you know that this side would go face down on your mat. Just a little tip, not something that I thought about today because this particular vinyl, this is a very shiny side here and this to me is very dull. And um, so yeah little bit of a snafu, but it is very fixable. All right. Well, so basically everything's weeded. I have heated the surface of the wood. I have put my design down and then I have just measured to make sure that it is um, as even where I want it. Vertically, I think all three of these slats are centered really nicely. So I'm going to take my Easy Press Mini and it is, and again, it is on two wavy lines and I'm just going to press this. I'm gonna go in sections and I'm gonna do 40 seconds with firm pressure and constant movement. So I will speed this up for you and we will then reveal the final project. <laughs> see that this particular vinyl does not like to be put on this wood. I'm really not sure what's going on here. The other side did really, really, really well. So I think what I'm going to have to do is probably I will probably be able to salvage the, um, I'll have to pull up the fire and the logs, which is totally okay. I can heat this and I'll be able to pull that up. I'm not sure why this particular vinyl 
doesn't like the wood. I have absolutely done so much HTV on wood. So this is this particular side right here. Okay. But this side did really, really gorgeous. I mean, this is just, I could not ask for a more perfect project. And I'm just going to pull up the carrier sheet. Okay. Like this. Oh, we got one tiny little spot. This particular wood spot right there. We're going to fix that super fast. Let that be for a minute. I'm going to go on this side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my true control knife and I am literally just going to cut along here where these slats are so that when I pull up my carrier sheet that it doesn't pull the rest of my vinyl up. This is makes for quick and easy work. I love my true control knife. These are definitely not your everyday, ordinary X-Acto knives. They are so much better. Oh, this side is just, it is just gorgeous. It is perfect. Okay, I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to grab a couple of these pieces. There's one. Two, three. Yeah. Get this last little bit over here. And I might just go along the edge there with my with my heat press one more time. Okay, so I think this side is perfect. And I was able to put the tip of the mini down and kind of go over those little edges where I cut, but I think that looks great. Um, I think on this side over here, later today, I will have to work on just, you know, removing this particular vinyl. Um, I don't think it's going to be too hard. I'm just going to have to heat it back up and pull it away. And so we'll be able to, we'll be able to fix this side and I'm not totally worried about it. Um, you know, it's one of those things that sometimes our projects kind of hit a little roadblock. Let's go ahead and bring in the s'more elements. My kids, my kids have already gotten into this. It's kind of funny. Okay, so we've got marshmallows. We have graham crackers. And then our chocolate bars. And so here is our little s'mores station. I love this. I think this came out really, really well in the end. And I'm not really concerned about the other side, but I think that'll be super fun. And what, just what a fun way to keep all of the s'more stuff organized when you're going on a camping trip or you're just out, um, out in your backyard. So I'm really hoping that this video was informative and inspiring to you. 
and that you guys will go out and make some more memories this summer with your family. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all of your crafty friends. And until I see you in the next video, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.